Hello Internet. As you may have guessed, I have another broken card. Just the board this time. If all goes well, the Gigabyte I stole GPU from in my last video will serve as a donor and I will steal its heatsink too. Since I don't have to disassemble this card, let's go straight into measurements for resistance and see if we find anything abnormal. It looks like we have kilo ohms on 12 volt and there's also a fuse, I want to make sure it's not blown and it looks to be okay. 3.3 volt we have 4.6k Next I'll check the memory and I have almost 80 ohms which is a healthy value. Basically we're going over every coil on the board looking for any strange resistances. All except these because these coils go straight into the GPU and the resistance of the GPU is very low. This one is PEX with 96 ohms. 1.8 volt shows 870. 12 volt kilo ohms. 5 volt 48 ohms. That's bad. Two 12 volt external connectors. Looks like both of them showing the short circuit. To make my life easier, I take photos of all my cards, so I can reference the measurements and the voltage later if needed. So if I look over my notes, I can see that I have an unusually low resistance on 5 volt and 2 on 12 volt lines. Normally, you would want to start with the visual inspection, but I'm too lazy so I'll take a shortcut by using my thermal camera. But first, I have to prepare the board by removing these coils in order to help us localize the problem area. In order to have any sense of direction in which to dig, when coils are removed, we check each pad separately. The pad that shows us less resistance tells us which way we need to look. And it looks like they're pointing us to the left. The pad at the bottom also indicates the problem to be on the left. So let's look left and see what's going on. Limiting my power supply to 1 amp, I'll be touching the left pad with the positive lead coming from the power supply. And I'll scan the area for anything that's glowing. It's best to start looking for short at a lower level. So I'll start with the 5 volt rail first. And it shows me a face controller and a driver slash MOSFET. Two in one package. Okay, so let's take a look at this DR MOS, aka driver MOSFET, and see if it has any signs of damage. And it looks like it has a burn mark on the right. Hopefully it'll come out in one piece, not damaging the board. But the only way to find out is to remove it. Looks like the board has survived, but the bottom pad is now detached from the board and is in risk of contacting the neighboring pad. So I'll cut some of it off and glue the rest of it to the board. Unfortunately, I don't have this part available, so I'll have to steal it from the donor. Get it clean and get it ready to go on the board.
Once part is installed, I will go ahead and place earlier removed coils back on the board, since we no longer need them removed. And then retake all the measurements and see if anything changed. And it looks like one of the 12 volt lines is still shorted out. Possibly because it's affecting a different group of driver MOSFETs. So let's give it some voltage and see if anything lights up. And it does. And as before, I will steal one from the donor and place it on our new board. Once cleaned up, I will inspect the soldered pins and this one I don't like so I will quickly go over to make it look like it came from a factory. Ok, recheck the measurements and the short is gone and even the 5V rail is now showing several kilo ohms. All is looking very promising but remember this controller was part of the short circuit. I decided to replace it as well, just to be sure we don't have any problems later. And as I was removing it, I accidentally knocked off four components, which I thought I positioned correctly. But taking a quick look at the donor board, I had to quickly rotate a couple of them uh, to avoid any potential disasters. The lesson here is either take detailed pictures of the board or have a donor sitting around for comparison. Everything is looking good, let's power the card and see how many amps it likes to draw. And it looks like just under 2 amps, a little bit on the high side, but it's ok. If you're one of my lucky subscribers, you already know that there may be some issues with the memory phase. So let's take a look, before we run any tests. Thermal camera reveals that one capacitor here gets significantly hotter than the other. I'll replace them both and I'll steal them from the donor board. With the replacement complete, thermal inspection reveals that the problem went away, but you may notice that the lower phase is hotter. 
that's just by a couple of degrees so there's nothing to worry about. Next, I want to make sure the signal is good on both phases. As well as all the V-core phases present. And it looks like all is well. Moment of truth. Here we go. Now let's wait and see if the memory test would pass. And it does. Okay, great. Now I can put the card together just so I can look at this previously known problem area. And I'll take it apart once more. It seems to me that this card was no exception to lack of memory cooling. I don't see good contact with the pad, so I will have to disassemble the card again, remove old pad, and put in a new one. Add more paste, close it up, and finally we are ready to run some tests. A few minutes later, and the firmware mark and the memory stress testing shows stable temperatures. That's always a good sign. Then, as usual, I have to run a few gaming engines to make sure that there are no artifacts or lag. Everything is looking good, and this video came to an end. I thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.